You, you've got to do this to make God happy. You've got to uh, keep these to make God happy and God to accept you and get God to do something. And see, that, that's crept over into the even the full gospel. You've got to do this to get God to do that. If you'll do this, God will do that. Well, I can't just say this one. It's already done. Well, if it's already done, then we have no confidence in the flesh. We just worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ. Now I gotta go on. Uh, he said, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. Paul said, if you want to talk about confidence in the flesh, he says, All right, if any other man think that he hath worth, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day. That was what was required. Eight day. Wasn't the seventh, wasn't the eighth, or wasn't the ninth. It was the eighth day. So he had the day right. And he got circumcised. Uh, of the stock of Israel. So he's a descendant of, of the nation that God has, you know, given his word to. Of the tribe of Benjamin. So he's a descendant of who? Abraham. He's a descendant of Abraham. So who, who received the promises? Uh, of the he, a Hebrew of Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee. As touching law, not only did he know it, he was teaching. And so as touching the law of Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church because he thought that was against God. He thought they were coming because it's a grace church. And it's coming against the law of God. And so he persecuted. Touching the righteousness which is in the law. Blameless. He says, but what things were gained to me. Those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb that I may, that I may win Christ, and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness of which is of God by faith. Now notice what Paul says here. Not having my, he says it's touching the law, blameless, the righteousness that's in the law. He said blameless. He said I was strict. If it said don't eat this, I didn't eat it. He said do this, I done it. He said I was of the strictest. He said so concerning righteousness that's in the law, he said blameless. I checked all the boxes, he said. If you could get to God this way, Paul said, I was the man that was going to do it. I could have got there by checking all these boxes if it were possible to get there by checking these boxes. If this was the requirement, he said, I could have got there. I fulfilled all of this. But he said, I counted all of that loss to win Christ. Because the law blinds you to grace. The law blinds you to Christ. And it says, you can do this. You can do this. You can be like God. Who's that sound like? You can do this. You don't need God. You can do this. You can do this on your own. You, you can, I, I, I've got confidence that you can do this. You can make God happy. You, you can excel. You can do good, all these things. And Paul said, that was me. I was convinced that if we did all of this, that we were, we were good. But he says, when I come to know Christ, he said, I count it all. I, get, I let all that stuff go. I don't have no confidence in the flesh. I don't have no. He says, no. Mine, he says, was be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Not doing it the way that the law said to do. But 
but doing it in Christ, but being found in Him. Uh, he says, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. And I looked at that and the Holy Ghost says, who's faith? And so I read it again. And I said, well, it says the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. And the Holy Ghost said again, who's faith? So I backed up and read it again. Because I was always in the, under the impression, well, you know, it's, it's my faith that does this. It's my faith that accomplishes this. It's my faith that gives me a hold of this. But when I looked at it, it said, through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And so the Holy Ghost says, it's the faith of Christ. That brought me the righteousness of God. Okay. In this scenario, the faith of Christ, the righteousness of God, what part did I play in becoming righteous? What did I do to make righteousness Come to me. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. The word sufferings is hardship or pain and emotion or influence, affection. He said that I may know what he felt. That I may know what he felt. The fellowship of his suffering. So Paul says, I, I want to I wanna feel what he felt. And he had an affection for people. He had a, an emotion for people. He had, he had something for people that he wanted to see them come out of this and come into what he was bringing because he understood that without him, without his sacrifice, they're not going to make it. Without him... You know, we started this in Luke 4. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. And so Jesus is saying, it's the Spirit of the Lord. It's the anointing that he's placed on me. That now I'm able to do this for you. Before I wasn't able, but now I'm able because of the Spirit of the Lord and because of the anointing he's placed on me. And so now you can get your healing. You can get your deliverance. You can get your eyes open. You can have understanding. You can be free. And, and, and I've come to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's when all debt was wiped out. When everybody went free, right? He says, I, I've come to declare this because of the Spirit of the Lord and because of the anointing. Now that, now that you can have all of this. I have done this and now here I'm handing it to you. I'm giving it to you. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. He says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. All things are of God. Y'all need a five-minute intercession already. Kind of gather yourself on this. Y'all need, need a little time. I know this is, but let me finish this. And then maybe the light will come on your behalf. Oh, okay, I, I see that. And he says, all things are of God. Amen. All things are of God. It's of Him. Okay? Who has reconciled us to Himself... By Jesus Christ. Okay. All things are of God. God reconciled us to himself. How? By you. 
by your repentance, by your by you. By who? Huh? By who? Who did he reconcile us to himself? By who, Angie? Jesus Christ. It's on the board. God. All things are of God. God sees us down here. We're a beautiful bunch, aren't we? We're so good, he wants to do something. No. We are so wicked, we are so bad. And God says, what can I do? I read one place that said, I'm not sick of that. No. So he said, what can I do? I love them so much. What can I do? And he says, I know what I'll do. I'll send my son, Jesus Christ, to die for them and reconcile them back to me. Who's down here going? We, we need you. We want you. We, you know, you've got to do something. No, there's none. God come up with this. God says, they're going to be a miserable bunch. You just think if God had just stayed out of there. Would we even be here today? No. We would have killed one another. We would have destroyed each other. But, but he loves us. And so he says, I, I'm going to do something. And so he says, I'm going to reconcile them through Jesus Christ, my son. Uh, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciled the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So he says, God has already done this. God's already taken care of it. God's already done everything. And Paul said, now he gave us a word of reconciliation to give to the people. That it's already been done. It's already, you know, a lot of people says, well, if you'll pray this prayer, then, then God will accept you. If you shed enough tears and you're sorry enough, God will accept you. Right? If you'll show, you know, well, I don't know if they're saved or not. You've got to watch them for a while. And it's all based on what you do. Our reconciliation is not based on what you do. You're, you're already reconciled. He reconciled to you by Jesus Christ. Now a word of reconciliation comes and you go, okay, God doesn't hate me. God loves me. God's already taken care of it. Then, then, see, it makes it easy. It makes it easy. How many before they were saved thought it was hard to get saved? It's tough. tough. I've done a lot of stuff. I've done bad stuff. I've messed up. How could God love me? How could God? I can't meet to his requirements. I can never live up to this. I can never be like somebody else and live like that and be holy like they are and live like they can because they're thinking out of their mind before they've accepted it. They're thinking out of their self and they're, all they've got to look at is their past experience. And your past experience is horrible. You live for yourself. You live selfish. You sinned on whatever the flesh wanted to. You live for the devil. You can't judge it by that. You've got to look at it and go, no, but God's already reconciled. God's already did this. He says the word reconciliation is exchange. He says the word reconciliation, God says I've already exchanged you for my son. I've already given him for you. So he's already in your place. He's already took care of all your doings and your dealings and your, your sin. He's already took care of your sickness, your disease and everything. He's already done that. I've already exchanged. The word also means restoration to favor. And you know what favor is. It's grace. 
It's a gift. And a gift, you do nothing to earn it. It's a free gift that is given. And he gives it to us. I'm preaching God too big, too good. I'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> now we, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Be you reconciled to God. Well, if God's already done it, God's already provided the exchange and the reconciliation, then that, doesn't that make that the easiest thing I've ever done? If God, the Holy One, the God of the universe, the God that's holy and sits on the throne in heaven and, and spoke out of His mouth and things were the good and gracious God, if He's already done all of this, then that does not make it easy on my part. All you got to do is go, I do. Right? I do. Right? What, Rachel, what did Rachel make you do before he would marry you? I mean, no man for that. If I ask the wrong person, I'm going to ask somebody else. Huh? To be married, all you had to do is accept it when he asks, or you ask him. However, <laughs> Rachel, are you kidding me? I'd never ask you. <laughs> but when he asks, all you had to do was what? Accept. Say, I do. Right? I do. Do you take it? I do. So, the groom and the father of the groom had done got all this prepared. All you got to do is say, I do. So you got to do. And you're in a relationship. Because they've done prepared everything. They've done paid for everything. They've done got everything set up. Now all you got to do is say, I do. You remember the parable? He said, go out. The wedding is prepared. Go out and bid them to come. What they have to do? Come. Just come. Come to the wedding. What did he say when he was on the side after he resurrected? They got out of the boat and they came to the land and he said, come and die. There was fish. That on the coals. He done had it fixed and he was on the bank. He said, come and die. Just come and die. Here it is. And he has, uh, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made. We might be made. That word made is to cause to be. Come into being. Be done. Be ended. Be finished. Be fulfilled. That we might be made. The righteousness, the, that means justification, innocent, holy, the righteousness of God. That we might be made the righteousness of God. When I read that, I thought, man, I, we've said it a lot. I got this from Tim. Tim used to try to preach this in places, and they was like, mm, you don't preach that here. <laughs> and when Tim was telling me about it, I thought, I don't know about that. Because he was trying to teach people you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And when Tim was telling me about it, I was laughing about the story and I was standing there thinking, am I really the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Does God really see me righteous? Does he see me holy? Does he see me innocent? Because when you begin to think about something and you think of past, you think of what you've done and what you haven't done, don't you? You think of you. I wasn't I was thinking of me. I wasn't thinking of him. But when I think of him, is he righteous? Yes. Is he holy? Yes. yes. He is. 
And so he made me, he finished me, he, he, uh, he ended it, he fulfilled that I am the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. And I'm like, that is so wild. I, man, I'd have to become a monk and live in a mountain and get away from everybody, wouldn't you, to become holy and righteousness of God, wouldn't you? If I were, if I were, if it was me and I'd say, God, look what I did. I separated myself from everybody. I'm, you know, I've thought pure for years. Now, will you accept me? And he goes, no. What do you mean, no? I've did everything. I've, I've separated myself. I got rid of all, and I've only thought on you for years. Will you accept me? He says, no. What do you mean, no, you won't accept me? He said, because it's not you that does this. He said, it's me. And when you see that, then you're going to see that I made you the righteousness of God. You could never make yourself. So I made you the righteousness of, of myself. You have my righteousness. You are righteous. When? When you believe that. Before you ever do anything. Let me ask you this. People will say, well, if I believe that, then I, I would live any way I wanted to. You can live any way you wanted to. But if you see that, you will not live any way you want to. When you see his goodness, when you see his righteousness, because you become what you look at. And you look at his righteousness and what he has done. And you I don't know about you, but when somebody does something for me, I'm thankful. When somebody does something for me they don't have to do, I'm thankful. It means something to me. It touches me. It changes me. Well, nobody has done more than what Jesus and God has done for you. I mean, he's done it all. And he says, here it is. I'm giving it to you. All you got to say is, I do. I do. And then starts the relationship. Now you see yourself. Because a lot of people come to God and they say, God, I'm sorry. I, I repent of my sins. I am so sorry. Uh, forgive me. Uh, I'll confess them. Oh, let's see. When I was three, I lied about being hungry. When I was four, I stole a toy. When I was five, I hit my sister. When I was six, could you remember all the sin you've done? There's no way. And you go through your whole life confessing all your sins and say, okay, God, now you can forgive me because I've confessed all my sins. And he looks at you and says, I already made you righteous. I already forgive you. I've already done it. And when you begin to see that, you look at yourself as God looks at you and you see yourself in a new light. And you, you go, I don't do that anymore because that's not who I am. Why don't you do that anymore? Because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I don't do that anymore. I don't talk like that. I don't do those things anymore because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And most of the church will say, you think you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? How can you think that? You're just a person. You can't, no way can you do that. Yeah, I can. Because what he did. He did. It gets worse. Come on. Uh, righteousness of God. Romans 3 and verse 10. He says, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understands. There is none that seeketh after. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. The throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used to see. The poison of ass is under the lip. If you want to say amen to any time I read any of these, just go ahead and say amen. Come on. Right? Come on, let's be honest. Right? Amen. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh -huh. That's me. Or just don't say amen. Just say that's what no, I've done it. That's me. You know? Uh, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Yeah. 
Their feet are swift to shed blood. Oh, I've never killed nobody. Oh, with your tongue, you slay a bunch. <laughs> Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace they have not known. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that ever every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Wait a minute. What did this say in the New Covenant? What did this say in the New Testament? For by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. Then why don't we bring them in, get them born again, and say, Now, you got to do this for God to keep loving you. You got to do all of these things. And they try. And then they fail. And then they, they become so miserable and they finally give up. Don't they? They give up because they see, I can't do this. Because they're all, they're depending on themselves. They're trying to do it in themselves. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Listen, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, whose faith, listen, listen now, just going with this, whose faith got the righteousness of God? And brought it down here. Jesus is dead. The righteousness of God, which is by faith of, not faith in, faith of Jesus Christ. So Jesus brought us this righteousness. Then he made us righteous. Okay, now let's go on. Unto all and upon all that. Perform that belief. Belief what? Belief what? It's what I thought. I thought it's unto all and upon all of them that believe. And I thought, believe what? Believe that I am. That the righteousness of God was by the faith of Jesus Christ that he did this and not me. And I believe that he is my atoning sacrifice. I believe that he's my substitute. I believe he's my reconciliation. I believe he's the one that came and took the place and took all the sin of the whole world upon himself. And I believe that God was so pleased with it that God gave me his righteousness. God made him to be sin, not just to take sin, but made him to be sin that I might be made the righteousness. And so I, it's not that I'm just righteous. I am the righteousness of God. Woo! You are. The book says I am. The book says I am. Now, if you ask me, my flesh, I have no confidence in it. You follow me around for a week, and we're going to have problems. What do you mean? Will you follow me every step for a week? We're going to have problems. Because you're going to go, oh, you messed up there. Oh, you messed up there. I'm going to show you messed up. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna you can pick anybody apart. <laughs> I tell you, follow you around for a week. Follow you around a week. See how you do. No, you don't. <laughs> no, don't no, hang on. No, because I am my worst critic. I'm going to go, I'm going to pick myself apart. And I could 
stay down all the time. And I'm not going to tell anybody that God is reconciled because I feel like I'm not. I feel like I'm a low down dirty dog. So I'm not going to tell anybody that God's already done this for you because I'm trying to do it on my own. And if I think I can't do it, they can't do it. So why tell them about it? They're just going to be miserable like I am. But if I know I am the righteousness of God because of what Jesus did, I can tell them, say, Jesus can handle that. Jesus can take your problem. Jesus already took your sin. Jesus already took your sickness. Jesus already took your disease. He already took your depression. He already took your guilt and your shame. He already... Praise God. All you got to do is say, what? I do. That's all you got to do. If you'll say this prayer after me, repeat it word for word and really mean it in your heart. Now, you got to really mean it in your heart. <clears throat> I've got some weather coming up. I may do this just to be mean. Do you take this and to be your husband or wife? I do. Do you really? <laughs> Are you serious? Are you sure? I don't know if I believe that. Do you show me something? Give me proof here. All your sins, I do. I, I don't know if I believe you or not. You know the sins? Yeah. <laughs> you sure you want to? Hey, it ain't going to be what you think it is. There's going to be some hard times. There's going to be some trouble coming your way. There's going to be times you're going to cry out, my Jesus, why? But no, we just go, do you? I do. Do you? I do. Okay, you are. Right? You do? You do? You are. Right? But comes to God, no, we got to prove it. I, I will prove one thing. That God made me righteous. By the faith of Jesus. By the faith of Jesus. What, what, where did I get to? What verse was that? Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, that means an atoning victim for the mercy seat. Jesus Christ is our mercy seat. Through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance or the tolerance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. You said, what's my part? You believed in Jesus. It was Jesus' faith that brought me God's righteousness. It's His faith. You say, what's the importance of this? The importance is, you know me. I'm a faith preacher. I believe in grace and faith. And there has to be a balance. Grace and faith. But when I begin to look at this, I have been trying to muster up my, my faith. When I couldn't get something, I thought, well, it's my lack of faith. I've not got this. Right? It's my lack of faith. I, I need to get more faith. And so I would, I would try my best. I, I need more faith to get this. God's not giving it to me. I'm not receiving it because I've not got enough faith. And so I need more faith. In fact, I, I got to get more faith. I got to get all that, and I get it. But when I looked at this, and, and I thought, well, my righteousness comes by his faith. He got God's righteousness. God's righteousness. He got Jesus did. His faith got that. Brought it down here on this earth. And said, 
Here it is. Here it is. Now, you can have it. You can have it. All you got to do is just receive it. Just, just, just get it. My faith is in Him. My faith is not, well, I need faith for healing. I need faith for deliverance. I need faith for prosperity. I need faith for this. I need faith for that. No. Everything I've read said it was His faith that got all this. My faith is in Him. My faith is in Him to get it. Well, if He's got it and I'm in Christ, it's here, right? Isn't it here? Where's it at? Let's go to heaven and get it. Let's go down below and get it. No, let's bring him up. Let's go get him from that. No. Come, Lord, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, salvation. Come. Come, healing. Come. Let's come, healing. Come, prosperity. Come now. Is that what we're supposed to do? Where's it at? The kingdom is within you. The kingdom's in the Holy Ghost. That's why the devil said, if I can keep them from the Holy Ghost, I can keep them out of the kingdom. And if I can keep them out of the kingdom, I can keep them out of righteousness. I can keep them out of healing. I can keep them out of deliverance. If I can keep them from the Holy Ghost. Hey, they might die and go to heaven, but they're going to die early. They're going to die sick. They're going to die poor. They're going to die depressed. If I keep them out of the kingdom. Back up and listen to Tim Thursday night. He talks about the Holy Ghost and receiving the Holy Ghost. That's a, that's a message for the church that the church don't want to hear. But the church needs to hear. Because we've been, we've, we've had those people we talked about a while ago. Beware of dogs. Beware of the concision that cuts people off. Beware of all of that. Because people are afraid to, to tell people, hey, you're born again? Awesome. Glory to God. See you in heaven someday. Hallelujah. How you doing right now? Well, it's been a tough road. And it's hard. I can't tell you how hard it is. All this life. And so, no. Holy Ghost gives you power. He gives you victory. He gives you, he lets you know that you are the righteousness of God. He lets you know, hey, you are the righteousness of God. Hey, I messed up. Holy Ghost. I know you did, but you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that. I am, man. You're, a, you're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer. Get up. Let's go. We got work to do. You know, Paul tried that chunk. Paul said, they never going to listen to me in this town. And, and he said, no, get up and go. You got a message. Go. You got an anointing. Go. Don't. Don't. No, hey, I was there when Stephen was stoned and I helped the coach and I feel so bad. He said, well, get up, let's go. Let's get up, let's go. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He hath made you to be such. Now my faith is in him. My faith is in Jesus. You know? And so I just, I, have you got faith enough for healing? Mm -hmm. Because Jesus has it. My faith is in him. My faith is in him to say, he got it all. He said on the cross, it is almost done. Did he? It, it, one day it'll be completed. One day in the sweet by and by, when it's all said and done, you'll get all of this. No, he said, it is finished. It's fine. It's, it's done. It's, it's over. And we don't have time. Relations, do we? Let's say that one, two, three, four. No, ain't got time for all that. It'll be another 30 minutes. Uh, and y'all, I know y'all like settled on this, but there's a whole bunch more of this faith, uh, faith, uh, faith, uh, faith, uh. There's a whole bunch more of it. Paul talks about it in Galatians to write the same things, and not. So was Paul convinced? That it wasn't his faith that God to, got God to do something. It was Jesus' faith. And Paul said, I just believe in Jesus. How was Paul trying to get to God before? Through the law, through works. 
to what he was doing. What did Paul say about that? It's nothing. I count it all as law to gain the knowledge that Jesus Christ has done all of this. You see, that's how we're going to get people to change. That's how people are going to, to get a hold of this when they go, I'd like to go to heaven and I'd like to accept Jesus and I'd like to be filled with the Holy Ghost, but I don't know if I can do this. It ain't about you. All you've got to do is say, I do. I do. I do, you know, without being made whole. You've been here 38 years. Would you be made whole? I ain't got nobody to live anymore. I ain't got nobody to help me. I can't do this. I, 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 I. It was a simple question. Would you be made whole? I, yes. Then take up your bed. And he finally did. But at first he wanted to talk about all the things he could and couldn't do. I can't do that, God. I can never do that. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. God said, I don't know you can't. When I called you, I know you couldn't. I don't want you to do it. I want you to let me do it. I just need you. God's always used somebody. You ever notice that? Go on and read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That's your, that's your sign. And see where God didn't use anybody, where God just done it all himself. God always used somebody. Did he? He said, you go. You say. You do this. Paul said he's given us the word of reconciliation. You have the word of reconciliation. You know how bad you were. You know how sorry you were. You know how sinful you were. And God got to you, didn't he? And all you had to do was just say, I surrender. Yes, I do. And you became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You got forgiven. Now all you got to do is tell somebody, hey, God, how you saying God was mad at me? He's not mad at me. I guarantee you there's a lot of people going to church that's staying in sickness because they believe this is the will of God in my life. God's punishing me for something I did years ago. No. no. Would you be made whole? Yes. Yes, I do. Thank you, God. Christ's name. Hallelujah. There's a question. Come back next week. No, no. You, you can ask me. There's a question in your heart. All you got to do is come to me. You got all the answers? Nobody knows who does. You do? Yes. I know a guy that's got all the answers. Done, done all the stuff. Took care of all your problems. Took care of everything that you've got in your mind. He's done, done it for you. All you got to do is accept it. All you got to do is receive it. There's not a thing God's holding back from you. There's not a promise He's lacking for you. There's nothing He has held back. Nothing He's kept from you. Everything is available. So if you have anything, anything you need, God's got it. It's already been done, already paid, taken care of. What do I do? You just in faith, you go, I do. I receive that. I receive that by faith in Jesus Christ. My faith is in Him. He had the faith. He had the faith. He had the faith. He said, He did never, He didn't doubt God. He got it. And so my faith is in Him to get it and get it to me. Right? So I have all, and I abound in abundance. As man, I see this. I see it so clearly. And what what do I do now? I rest in Him. I'm just resting in Him. Are you resting in Him? Or are you laboring to try to get God to do something on your behalf? If you are, stop it and just receive it. and just just say it. I do. I do, Lord. I receive it. In Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. That's it. And you got it. Anybody see it? Angie, I understand. 
said, Marianne, God, lights are coming on all over the place. Lights are coming on all over the place. Lights are coming on people. But I, I, get, I know it. that way for me, too. I was like, I was, wait a minute, I see that. I've been trying so hard to please God with my faith. Oh, I believe that. Oh, I read that. I believe that. Bless God. Now I'm just like, wait a minute. It's not, it's not my faith. It's Jesus' faith that got this. I believe in Jesus. Where's all you made that? In Jesus. Every bit of it. It's in Him. It's in Him for everything. It's in Him. He got it. Amen. And so now I am righteous. Let me say, let me ask you, can you say that? And and and, and your flesh goes, Yeah, yeah. Or do you still go, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? And your flesh goes. I mean, I mean, still, huh? Come on, you, you're not practicing enough. You got to practice it more. You got to say every day, "I am the righteousness of God." When them thoughts hit you, and the devil says you're not going to make it. You're going to, "I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus." Devil, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm going to make it. I'm going, I'm going to do more and make it. I'm going to come out on top. You guess where your head's at? It's under my feet. That's where you're at. And when you tell him you're the right man, you've got to be looking down. You can't be looking up. Devil, no. You look down and you go, Devil, hey, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am. Because Jesus made it that way. All to Jesus, I owe. Right? All to Jesus, I owe. He's done it all. He's preserved me. He's kept me. He's, he sent me the Holy Ghost. He saved me. He delivered. He's healed me. All of that was in Him. And He gave it to you. He said, Carry it here. Here. It's yours. Just take it. Just take it. Right? I'm going to have to confess something this week. You know, I told you I took that dog because I, I'm always, if you give me something, I'll take it. A lady this week had three one eyed cats. <laughs> Kittens. And she tried to give them to me. I did refuse that. <laughs> I did refuse that. And she said, Thank God. I looked down at them, and I've been wanting some cats, but the barn. But I looked down at them, and, they, and I thought, How many one eyed cats can you have? <laughs> And they little kittens, of course, kittens. But I, I told her, I said, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. And, and I walked out and I go, I broke my cardinal rule of, of taking some. And the devil, uh, the Holy Spirit said, that's all right, ma'am. You're not supposed to take some. That's not good for you. That's bad. You're not supposed to take something that that it's not a gift, it's I gotta get rid of it. Yeah. And I thought, oh, okay, thank you. I'm short of them when I cats. I just did. I was like, now Piper, when he brought Piper out, well, Piper just beautiful little dog. She just, you know, uh, but the I said, she said, you won't tell me have all three of them. I looked down and nope, no, thank you, ma'am. You gotta go. I, I, I left. And so the Holy Ghost is always teaching me something. So, you know, I said, I need to tell people now, you know, hey, if somebody gives you something, just take it no matter what it is. No, that's wrong. Don't take it no matter what it is. You know, the devil tries to slip something in on you, give you something that you, that's not a blessing, you know. So don't do that. You know, take the good things of God. God gives good gifts. Right? Unto his children. And so every good thing comes from above. Every good thing received. Right? Receive every good thing that comes from above. Don't go out another day without receiving everything God has for you. And he has it at all. Right? He has everything for you. And so I pray that you open up your hearts to receive what God has for you. God has things for you that, that you need 
so you can be full, so you can be full of everything of Him. You can have the fullness of God in your life. And so you will feel adequate in every good work. And so you won't be afraid or ashamed because you won't be thinking of you, be thinking of Jesus when you open up your mouth to speak. Whether it's to somebody, a friend, a stranger, a family, or somebody you're around, or if it's to something demonic that's trying to influence your life, you won't be afraid to speak and tell it. And tell it what it needs to be told. Amen? Amen. You have that power. You are more than conquerors. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And my life is hid in Christ Jesus. And if your life is not hid in Christ Jesus, hide it there. Hide it. How do I do that? Accept his marriage proposal. Say, I do. And when you do, you take his name. You take your name. You don't even. Your name is God. He takes your name and, and he gives you his name. He says, now we're one. We're one. Hallelujah. And so when the devil comes to mess with me, and now, before he can mess with me, now, he's got, he's got to deal with my... And you can't even say that anymore. I can't even say that anymore. They've ruined that. Now you got to deal with my husband. <laughs> Because that's who he is. I am the bride of Christ. You are the bride of Christ. He's my house man. He's my protector. He's my provider. And, and he, gave, he said, I'm not leaving you an orphan. I'll send you the Holy Ghost. And my Holy Ghost is with me wherever I go. Every day. And he's the one revealing this to me. And I thank you for it, Holy Ghost. I thank you. For the God, for the Holy Ghost in my life, I thank you for the truth. 